My name is Lutz van Dijk. Um, I was born 61 years ago in Berlin, Germany. At the time, West Berlin, the wall was still around. And um, it was 10 years after the war, which um, was very important for my childhood um, to realize, and this was my first big lesson in life, that war is something horrible and it should never happen again. When I did research about, historical research about the history of the persecution of gay men during the Nazi period, um, most stories we could discover at the time uh, or could find out about were about discrimination, about torture, about uh, being imprisoned, about murder and killing, horrible stories. What makes Stefan Kozinski's story so different is that he also experienced love. This is a starting point. He fell in love with a German-Austrian soldier in occupied Poland, something which for many reasons reasons was impossible, was not done, because they were the enemies to each other. But um, it also shows how, how crucial, how um, overwhelming a feeling of first love can be. I remember that Stefan Kozinski said to me that when he first um, felt attraction towards other boys or men, he didn't even have a word for it. He had no idea what's going on with him. He just felt it's something positive because it was a positive feeling. Although I'm very much aware that the group of um, prisoners with the Pink Triangel in Auschwitz was a relatively small group compared to other groups who were uh, murdered in Auschwitz, I think it's still very crucial to understand the Nazi ideology why they were also focusing on gay men, why they even created their own marking, the pink triangle, for this group. And um, that even uh, Auschwitz commander Rudolf Hess in his diaries before he was um, hanged um, wrote about this group. So the Nazi ideology of um, their I I idea of the Aryan men and women had no space for any diversity, for any sexual minority. To me, um, it was very positive to see how somebody tried to integrate such a horrible experience into a positive life, difficult as it still was in Poland after the war. Um, and uh, it was very painful to see that at the end of his life, which is true to other survivors equally, um, he was haunted again by dreams nightmares of, uh, of this torture to an extent that um, two years before he died he burned all the letters, manuscripts and books he had in his possession in this little flat in Warsaw because in the nightmare he realized that he might, that he might be persecuted again and he had to de destroy all trace that he is a gay person. Stefan Kozinski said at the end of his life, he was in his early 70s then, um, that he still remembers, despite the horrible years of war, of hunger, of persecution, his first feelings of love as something beautiful. 